Well, good afternoon and welcome to uh, Ed's Orchids. It's a blistering hot day today. It's over 30 degrees and uh, it's too hot for me. I'm not sweating. I'm not perspiring. I think I'm melting. It's dripping off me. Anyhow, we're having a look at these cymbidiums. And uh, they've been out in all weathers. These, they were out in the storm. They were out in this hot weather as well. And you know, I... Um, uh, I'm not a real cymbidium lover, but I do love them when they flower, but uh, these aren't doing much, so uh, I'm going to clean them up a bit, and you can see there's a lot of dead leaves hanging around, and uh, we'll clean them up and see what we can do. Might cut a few leaves off and uh, throw a few back bulbs away, just to make them uh, respectable. So we'll see how we go. Well, this is the first one I'm going to have a look at, and this has got a label on it. I've just found it tucked away, and it's... Uh, this. Now, I don't know whether this is the right name or not, so uh, it was stuck in there, so we'll go by it. And if it ever flowers, we can see if it's that or if it's not that. Now, I've just been talking to a friend of mine who was absolutely excellent on uh, cymbidiums. Uh, he used to have some absolutely beauties. Um, but he's got rid of them all now and gone on to Phalaenopsis and uh, he's got a, I spoke talking to him he says he's got about 80 Phalaenopsis now he says and they were all uh, nearly all uh, species so uh, I must go and have a look at them sometimes anyhow I digress we'll have a look at this one and you can see some bad leaves on it and one thing or another so I'm going to take all them off and see what's what Just remove all these to begin with, so we'll give the new growth there a chance. I mean, I don't think these leaves are helping the plants at all, but uh, the bulbs are okay, all right. So uh, the new growth, which there are some new growth coming up, can uh, take the feed, I think, from the uh, suitable. Now, I'm not sure whether I'm doing right or not because uh, this friend of mine said to me, he said, uh, how long have you had them? I said, oh, years. He said, did they flower for you? I said, well, I've had one flowered for me. He said, bin them. <laughs> Just like that, bin them. Get rid of them, he says, if they're not flowering for you, they're not worth growing up. So this is my final straw with them. So we'll see how we go on with them. So I've took all the dead leaves off. Nice new growth there, lovely new growth there. Oh, well, oh, and some are coming up. Oh, I'll get the camera now. I want to just notice that. Well, that's where I've cut the leaves off, and I'll, uh, I'll trim it down further. But uh, just seen a nice little growth there coming up, and another one there. I've seen this one before, but I haven't seen the other one. Now, I don't know whether these are new growths or whether they're flowering spikes. Maybe somebody can tell me. I've absolutely no idea. Let's see if we can have a good look at them. Is that a new growth or is it a flowering spike? And we'll have a look around the other side. And there's the other new growth. Well, this is so hard, I need some uh, secateurs to chop it down. There's no greenery on it when I cut it, but there might be down here. Oh dear. Yep. Nah, not much. Just the yellowing, that's all. So we'll leave that one like that and uh, have a look at the next one. Some marks on the leaves here, I don't know what they are. Just check it, there's no mealy bug. No scale on them at all. So, uh, what I'll do, I'll give it a feed and put it again outside.
Well, they use another one with no label, and uh, these are beautiful new growth and new leaves on it, but suddenly they go like this, all mottled. Can anybody tell me why they do that? Because I'd love to know, because it looks terrible. And it looks that bad, I'm going to chop them off. I don't like them. I might be doing things totally wrong, but uh, they're quite hardy things, these, so uh, oh, let's take this leaf off. If I can get it off. They're quite hardy, these cymbidiums. I mean, I've been trying to kill these off for years and they won't go. But uh, I just thought they'd grow very nicely. So I'm not doing any more to that one. I'll put a bit of cinnamon on top there because uh, I've been trying cinnamon out lately and uh, it's not too bad. So yeah, we'll just put a little bit of cinnamon on there where I've cut. should stop anything happening there, so I'm told. So what I'll do with this one is just give it a watering like the rest one. And uh, if you want to know what I'm watering it with, it's uh, the RO water with uh, calcium, magnesium uh, and phosphogen in it. So it's got a bit of everything and some liquid seaweed as well. So it's got everything in it. I think the PP, uh, the TDS is around about 350. Well, I just took the other one back outside and uh, I just got hold of another plant and uh, everything came off in my hand. This is the only thing that's left. And it's got one bad root and one root what I don't think it's worth saving, what do you think? I don't know. I'll tell you what, I'll pot it up in here and, uh, and put it outside and see what it's like. Right, let's get some uh, nice work. Well, we'll just uh, pop this one up a little bit roughly and see what happens. And it's not like I'm short of space and I've nowhere to put it. I've plenty of places to put them. But uh, I just don't like throwing them away. It sounds a bit daft, I don't like throwing them away, but. Uh, if you can't do anything with them, which you always try to do, then uh, you've got to throw them away. So we'll leave that like that. I'll not water it because it's just got one root that's damp. So we'll put that outside and see what happens. Here's another one of the seven or eight I've got and this is uh, labelling it called uh, Cymbidium Spring Romance. I mean it sounds nice doesn't it, Romance, in every shape and form, but uh, this hasn't done nothing this year. It, it flowered last year, this is the only one, and uh, this year it's done absolutely nothing, not put any new growth up or anything. So we better take this out of its pot and see what's going on. I mean if you look, all the growth is at the back of the pot and absolutely nothing at the front. So that could be a waste of time, a waste of space there. So uh, we'll take this out of its pot and uh, we'll have a look what's going on with the roots. The roots should be fine, you know, but uh, might be better if I put them in a smaller pot and get it root bound. But we'll see.
How do you get this out? How on earth do you get this out? This is stuck. Well, it looks root bound as it is, but it's uh, absolutely boiling in here. I mean, it's hot. It shows what the weather's like outside. It's hot and damp in here. But uh, I really don't know what I'm doing, but uh, I just want to do something to try and help them to come on. I'll have a few complaints here and there, but uh, I always get them and I can answer them back. And if you're getting complaints of people that you're doing this wrong and doing that wrong, well, you're learning from them, aren't you? And that's what it's all about. Let's learn that there's a lot of bad, bad bugs in here. I've just seen them crawling around. And some bad roots in the middle. I'll just clean this up and then come back to you and show it you. You know, apart from the other plant I just showed you, you can bank on the uh, cymbidiums having new root growth. Or well, plenty of root growth. But uh, this needs a real good clean up. I don't know, it may be so I get some people on the uh, on YouTube saying, oh, well, you should have bitten them. But, uh, Maybe they're right. Maybe my friend was right, saying I should bin them. I don't know. But you know me, I like uh, I like messing, and uh, messing being the operative word. As long as I'm messing the right direction. I mean. When I know things, I'll uh, I'll say it. But when I don't know things, I'll also tell you. Then uh, maybe some of the uh, comments will uh, put me on the right tracks. That's what I'm doing for. That's what I'm doing these for. To learn more about them, and I'll only learn off uh, the people giving me comments because I don't know anything about these plants at all. Although I've had them years. What should I do with that? Should I take this off? Should I strip all this uh, hard hard leaves off this uh, back bulb here? Should I remove the back bulb? Because if I remove the back bulb, that one, I've just got this one and another leafless one there. Because there's a new growth here that hasn't got anything yet, but uh, should I take this back, back, this back bulb off this one? No, I'll give it a bit of a peel and see what it's like underneath. I know I'm being a bit rough with them, but uh, any other way with these things, they're so tough. Well, you see, it's, it's quite green underneath this. Not overly green. I'll say that, it's green at the front and uh, brown and black at the back. But it's, uh, it's as hard as iron, so that must be uh, 
must be supplying the new growths with some uh, with some uh, nourishment. Anyhow, I'll have a work do at cutting all these bad roots off and uh, come back to you. Well, I'm not going to do any more with this. I've uh, cleaned it up the best I can. I've uh, trimmed the roots down and I'm going to put it back in the same pot because the roots demand that it, uh, it needs a pot that size. I've thrown the bark away, got some fresh bark, so uh, let's just pot it up in there and then forget it. And I'm not doing any more of these cymbidiums until I get some uh, some comments, which I will, that uh, will tell me what to do properly. And uh, what are spikes and what are not spikes. It sounds daft, but I don't know. Oh. I mean, the people who are keeping uh, cymbidiums will be thinking, what a bit of a wally this man is. But, uh, yep, I am, when it comes to these plants. All right, when it comes to others, but uh, not these. You know, one thing I wish Rick were around these days. Oh, we used to have some decent conversations. And he would have told me what to do with these. I mean, he always, he always used to say, Rick he used to say, hey, you've forgotten more than I know. <laughs> you know, that was kind of it, wasn't it? But, uh, I wish him well wherever he is. I hope his hell's holding up all right, and uh, if we just hear from him again, that'll be wonderful. Anyhow, that's that one done. Well, these are the three I've just had a go at, and uh, even though I say it myself, they're looking a lot cleaner and a lot nicer. So. Uh, I'm glad I've done it, actually. Well, these are the three I've just done, and even though I say it myself, they, uh, they do look a lot cleaner and a lot better with no bad leaves on, and uh, been repotted, so uh, it should do them good. So we'll see how they go on from now on. I'm just leaving them outside, but uh, they get left out in all weathers. So uh, I think that's why a lot of the leaves are getting marked. But uh, we'll see what's what. And I'm going to bring them in in winter. I'm not going to leave them outside in the cold. I'm going to drop the temperature no more than about 12 degrees. So uh, that's the advice I've got of this friend of mine who used to keep uh, cymbidiums. So that's what I'm going to do. And uh, we'll see how we go from there. So it should show a big improvement next year. Well that's enough about the cymbidiums but uh, I'll just tell you a bit about this uh, these coconut husks I'm trying. Uh, now I went around to our uh, local water world place and they've got uh, it's uh, reptile bedding by Komodo and uh, it says it's uh, it's gathered from sustainable resources. So uh, what I did, I emptied it into a bucket of RO water and I put it all in and I left it in for about 18 hours and uh, when I came to look at it, it was like a solid mass in the, in the, in the bucket and it was um, TDS around about 660. Well then I started to uh, separate it 
into different buckets and uh, I filled one bucket sort of a quarter full with the hoofs and put it again in uh, RO water. Uh, left it again for 12 to 18 hours and it had dropped then from 660 to 448 parts per million. So then I, I got another bucket full of RO water, I squeezed the uh, bus out and I put it into the RO water again, the new RO water, and it dropped to uh, 220. So I thought, well, this is getting better. So I'd, uh, what I did after that, I, uh, I put it in some more and left it for another 12 hours or so, and it dropped to 22. Now after this I took it out of the uh, out of the bucket and I put it into a plastic container and I microwaved it for 15 minutes. It was wet and everything so uh, it will microwave okay. And uh, and then after that I... Uh, ooh, hang on there's a wasp knocking around me. And then after that I uh, put it again in RO water. And uh, I have it here in front of me and I'll just take the uh, reading of it now. I'm going to switch it on first. Press the hold button. Let's see what it is. Four parts per million. So that's lovely. So I'm going to uh, take this out of its uh, of the uh, out of its bowl now, and uh, I'm going to dry it off a little bit, and I'm going to use it tomorrow on some uh, some small puffy pedlums that I can't get growing properly, just to see if that uh, that does the trick. So I've got my little strainer, the thing about this though, you lose a lot of it, uh, the finings. So you probably finish up with uh, probably 25-30% of what you started with. But having said that, the, the more you uh, you soak it, the better it goes, which is, uh, that doesn't need explaining does it? That's a funny piece. Oh well. There's an awful lot of small pieces in here that, uh, that we don't really want. Well, that's about it. So there's the bark all ready for the bark. There's the coconut us all ready for use. And. Uh, Let's hope it does the job on the Paffia Pedlums. I've heard some good reports that it does work good on Paffia Pedlums, but uh, we'll see anyhow. Well, that's about all for this time. Thank you very much for watching and you're looking at all me uh, catliers hung up here in the roof. Uh, they're doing very, very nicely. The uh, sheaths are growing nicely, which I'll show you later on. And uh, the catliers seem to be doing quite well too. So uh, until next time, thanks very much for watching, thanks to all my subscribers, and uh, I'll see you later. Bye.